Welcome back to another episode of Vintage Diecast Restoration. Up for restoring this week, I've got a Lesney Matchbox number 17C Austin Taxi. So this model premiered in the 1 to 75 series in 1960, and it's kind of a unique model. It only has three doors. The the door on the would be the street side, uh, the passenger side uh, was open. And that's because in real life, that's how they were. Uh, that little platform was meant for luggage. So it made it really easy to load and unload suitcases in there. Um, this particular casting, you can see, is in terrible shape. Uh, it's been overpainted. It's blue. And when these models were originally produced by Lesney, they were maroon or kind of a, a dark red color. Um, and that was uh, kind of unique because in those days, all taxis in London were required to be black, and most of them are still black today. That uh, was a legal requirement so people could easily identify them. I'm um, not sure why Lesney made the choice to go with the maroon other than, you know, it's more fun for a kid to play with than just a black car. But uh, this model uh, has definitely seen some better days, and so we're going to do what we can to restore this back completely original. So I always like when I start a restoration to kind of figure out a, a game plan or a plan of attack on what I'm going to do. You can see the top of this appears to be shifted over and uh, that's probably why those A pillars up front are broken. Um, broken on the one side, missing completely on the other side. You can see the wheels on this, uh, the axles are very, very rusted. Uh, the rear axles don't seem to move at all. Um, and a lot of uh, paint issues on this. Obviously, this has been overpainted. I'm, I'm guessing it was so well loved and played with that the original maroon didn't last very long. You can see some slight areas there on underneath on the inside of the casting where that original color still uh, still lives and that's what we'll try to use to color match. Uh, first step like any other restoration is going to be to drill out the mushroom end of the post in here um, and I, I like to go really low speed. I use a drill bit that is the exact same size as the flange. I want to be really careful that I don't get too deep and get down into the base. Um, if you drill into the base, it, it'll never go back together. And then uh, I like to use this little wrench. It's, it's actually for my Dremel tool, but it's got a really fine little tip in there that seems to work really well. Um, the key with these is not to force it. Um, I like to drill a little bit, and when it looks like I got most of that flange gone, uh, try to pry it, see if it comes loose. If it doesn't, I'll drill a little bit more and uh, we'll try it again and you can see I'm going very very slow speed on this because I don't want to go too deep and I don't want to take too much um, I can always take a little bit more off but I uh, haven't found a good way yet to add back to that casting material and this particular one seems to be really really on there um, I want to be careful that I don't bend it uh, or, or damage that original casting piece at all um, you can see the, the little piece on the end, the tab and slot, that was already loose and that popped right out. So, looking at the base, gosh, we've even got overpaint on the inside of the base there where that uh, third door is missing. Obviously, we're missing the, the driver. Uh, that little extension there would, would have held a uh, cast metal driver. And then the biggest issue on this, obviously, are these wheels. I was, once I got it apart here, I was able to kind of break loose that really rusted rear axle. Um, and so we're going to proceed through our normal methods and we're going to try to uh, remove these wheels and axles. I'm not sure yet if I can save these axles or if I'll have to repair them. Um, to do the removal, I use just a, a squared grinding stone in my Dremel. I like to go... Uh, only like one or two clicks up, uh, keep it fairly low speed, um, just so that I have a little more control over it. I, I don't want to damage the ends of the axles. These are a, a mushroomed axle, uh, probably because this is a little bit of a later casting, and I want to be really, really careful that I don't get into 
the uh, original wheels on this. You can booger up the, the sides of a wheel really, really quickly if you let that get too far out of hand. Um, I'm lucky in this one that these wheels have a fair amount of overpaint all over them, so hopefully that gives me a little protection. Um, normally I would shove the end of that axle out as far as I can, and unfortunately because these are so rusted, I've got very limited uh, give on where these are at, so we're going to be very, very careful, remove that mushroomed end, that flange off these axles, and uh, see if we can clean up the axles and the wheels. So I really had a fit getting these wheels off. Uh, I've got the flange completely removed and the issue is not that there's uh, the, the mushroom end of the flange holding these on. Um, the main issue here is just the large amount of rust that's on these axles. Um, the, the steel axles, as they rust, they expand inside of the wheel. And so it's, it's really the, the friction, the, the tight fit is coming from the axle itself and not the mushroomed end. And so I've got to be really, really careful, especially how I pry against these. Um, I don't want to damage uh, the, the original wheels at all. Um, this is a, a gray plastic wheel model, so I know I can get uh, reproductions. I'm hoping that none of these wheels are split or cracked, um, which happens a lot when I get these uh, metal axle uh, rust issues on these. And so, the best method I have found really is just a lot of patience going very, very slow, working that loose, and uh, hopefully we can get all of these off successfully. So with our casting apart and all the wheels off the base, the next step is to dunk them down into our citrus strip and leave them for a couple hours to soak all of that original paint off. So it's been about three, four hours that we've left these soaking in the citrus strip. I wasn't really sure uh, what was going to happen with this casting because I didn't know what the overpaint was on this model. Um, but you can see it, it seems to have worked really, really well on the blue paint. I'm starting to see some white paint underneath. So this isn't just an overpaint, this is a double overpaint. And, uh, Again, I have not seen any even fleck of red anywhere on the outside of this model. So I think uh, this was very heavily loved by some child. We can see the red down on the inside there, and uh, even with this soak, most of that seems to be coming off okay. So this is probably going to take a few more hours, maybe a couple soaks to get all of it out. Um, but Again, I like working with the citrus strip. It's so easy, it doesn't have the fumes and a lot of the drawbacks that some of the other strippers do. So we'll go at it with our uh, wire brush and see if we can get these cleaned up. With the casting pieces cleaned up, we can turn our attention to the axles. 
Now to start, um, I've got to deal with that rust, so I left them in a little plain white vinegar to soak for a while. The, uh, the base casting here, you can see, um, is not in terrible shape. It's a little bent in the back, um, and it's not major enough. I can usually just do that with my fingers. The front here, you can see, is uh, quite bent, and uh, it was a little crooked to begin with around the, the post, um, and I think I probably made it worse as I was trying to take it apart. Um, and so I'm going to use a little firm, even gentle pressure just with my uh, needle nose pliers to get that base piece all aligned back and straight. Um, and this can, this can really um, put a lot of stress into that uh, casting. So I've got to be really, really careful when I do this. Um, I don't want to break off one of those axle mounts um, or put uh, you know stress fractures or cracks into this base so again I find the, the best method is to make very small movements um, over time and do it just a, a little bit kind of inch up onto where it needs to be um, but I think this is going to be easily fixable the uh, the main casting is certainly going to have a few more issues but I, I'm liking the way this uh, looks so far. Um, you can kind of see there's a little bit of the residual paint on there. I'm not that worried about it. We've still got to do a lot of paint cleanup on these. But uh, you can see it's mostly back to straight and square. For our uh, top casting, uh, you can see we're missing the A-pillar right here on the driver's side. And then this whole top piece has been shifted over. So we're going to have to push it back to get that uh, existing A-pillar to return. When I stripped all the paint off uh, of this casting, I also noticed this little crack on the, the door, that third door that's missing. Um, and I, I am guessing that it was previously just held together by the paint that was on there. Uh, but right where that running board meets the fender, um, it's completely cracked all the way through and loose. And so I've got to be really careful when I'm doing this. Uh, I didn't want to use a hammer or pliers or any sort of, uh, you know, tool that was going to put too much stress into this casting because I'm really trying to preserve um, that existing pillar that's left. And uh, the, the most important part of it is that's go what's going to tell me uh, when I've got it bent back over far enough uh, is when that aligns with the spot on the lower part of the casting um, I'll know that I've got it in the right spot. Um, so like I said, this is, this is really a challenge. I'm trying to do most of this just by hand, a little bit at a time, and uh, I don't want to put too much stress anywhere in here because I could totally ruin this entire car um, just in, in this step. Um, and I've got to be really careful with this bottom piece as well um, because as I put all that force on the, the top or the sides, um, I don't want to shove that out of alignment or break that piece off either. So the next step on uh, this base piece, you can see there's a fair amount of the original gray paint on there. Um, now most of this is loose due to the citrus strip, so it comes right off, um, but I didn't have a really good way to get either my toothbrush or my little metal brush down in some of these crevices and cracks, and so I'm using my uh, little dental pick set. Um, I really like this kind of flat bladed scraper on here, um, and just uh, you know, very gently going over this and scratching loose some of that paint that's already uh, gone through the strip process and, and just didn't quite let loose of the casting. The next step on repairing the uh, top piece of the casting here is going to be to restore the broken or missing A-pillar. To do that, I've got these uh, cotter pins. Uh, these are stainless steel um, and they are, I, I don't know exactly the size on this, these are just about perfect uh, matches for the, the casting piece that was in there. Um, if you look at the original pillar, it's kind of curved on the outside piece and it's flat on the back. And that's the same way that these little cotter pins are made. So I'm going to measure and cut 
uh, one of these pieces that will fit right in here and uh, use my uh, little side cutters, my little nippers, and we're going to try to cut a replacement piece to fit in that A pillar. put these uh, pieces, this little A pillar back in, I'm using just a few small dabs of uh, super glue, just crazy glue, um, CA glue. It, the, uh, the fit on this is tight enough and I, I wanted to kind of fine tune it to where it would really hold itself in there um, as I put the piece in. So it, it's not oversized, it's sized just you know right for the opening but I kind of have to pry up on the roof just slightly in order to get it in and so it's a pretty delicate operation and uh, I'm gonna try to reinforce this with a little of the baking soda um, you've seen me use this method on some of my other restorations and I've seen it on um, other channels and it, it just works so well um, that I'm gonna try it here Of course, the other repair we've got to make here is to the, the broken running board on the passenger side of the, the vehicle here. Um, I'm fortunate that, you know, it's a really tight fit, and I was able to bend the casting back to get those pieces to align. So just uh, pry that up very gently and put a little dab of glue in there. I'm going over it with just some dry baking soda, and I found that kind of the capillary action of the... Uh, glue will suck it out in into that baking soda. Um, most any of this that's residual remaining on the surface, I'm going to end up having to sand away. And so I want to remove as much of that while that glue is still kind of soft as I can. Um, so it's reinforced, but uh, it's not going to uh, change the appearance on the outside of the original casting. I can always build up a little bit more, but uh, this particular repair is kind of unique because of the awkward and odd position that it's in. Um, I've got to be really, really careful with getting too much of that material down in there because I don't want it to be seen when the casting is painted. So I've let our glue cure out for a couple hours now and uh, I'm really happy with this repair. Um, I've gone over it just with my emery boards to kind of sand off any of that excess glue, kind of trim things up, clean it up a little bit. And as you can see from the front here, getting that top piece shifted back over and getting those A-pillars straight, it's really hard to tell uh, that the, the driver's side of this is a replacement piece. Um, the cracked running board on the bottom there ended up cleaning up really nice. That's a very tight seam in there. And I think once I get that painted, um, you'll never ever know that that part of the casting was broken. I always like to do uh, a test fit of my pieces once I get everything cleaned up uh, just to make sure that you know it's all going to go back together nice and tight. If I've made an adjustment or bent something out of alignment um, during you know all the work that I did on the casting I don't want to have fresh paint on it when I'm trying to fix it and so uh, it's always nice to do a little test fit. So our wheels have been soaking uh, for a couple hours now uh, in the, the vinegar. The vinegar does two things. One, it's going to eat at 
the rust on that original axle and if I can get that rust off um, I may actually have a chance of getting the other wheel all the way down that axle so I'm going to clean these up with my emery board and a little quad out steel wool and see if we can save these axles the other thing that the vinegar will do on the paint on these wheels is cause it to come loose um, I've got to be really careful when I use the vinegar. I've actually dissolved a set of metal wheels by leaving them in the vinegar too long. It is a, a mild acid, um, and so I can can uh, usually get away with an hour or two, and on these, pla these gray plastic wheels, uh, I wasn't worried about them having a reaction to the vinegar. But as you can see, a little soak in there starts to cause some of that black paint that was uh, on these wheels to come loose, and so we'll use our dental picks to get down into all those nooks and crannies and clean out all those uh, residual areas of paint on these. So while I was mixing up my red for the taxi, uh, I happened to notice one of the other castings that I've, I've got in my queue, the Nestle's Comer van. And as you can see, the, the color match on this was just almost exact. So I uh, was able to knock out two models with the same color match. Um, and so I, I've already got the casting painted, but uh, I wanted to show how I mix this color because Lesney uses this particular red on a lot of different castings. So I'm starting with a uh, Tester's Dark Gloss Red. Um, that's most of the base, and I use one eyedropper full. I really like these eyedroppers because it's a uh, really easy unit of measure for me. One squeeze, two squeezes, whatever. Um, and any paint that I don't use, I can suck it back up and put it back in my jar when I'm done. Now, the dark red out of the bottle is not quite dark enough. And I found, um, through doing a couple of these now, that the best mix seems to be about two or three uh, drops of the black in there. It depends on the size of the drop, um, and I generally like to inch up on it. So try one or two. Uh, we're going to add a little of the thinner reducer, mix it up, do a quick check, quick comparison to see if it's the right color. If it's not, I can always add a little bit more black to it. But if I put too much in, it takes a lot of that base color to pull it back out. And so in the interest of using the least amount of paint that I need on these castings, um, I'm going to start with two drops of black and we'll mix it here. Uh, may need to add a little bit more and that's okay. So I was able to order a replacement casting on the driver. Uh, got this guy from MK uh, Model Car Parts. Um, I think it's modelcarparts.com. Uh, I've got. I'll put a link down in the description for where to get it. Um, the color for the driver originally was a, a kind of a dark cream color. So I started with my testers off white and added just a little bit of brown to it. Um, and it's so fine in there, I, I couldn't get my camera to focus uh, using my usual stand, so I kind of had to hold it. I apologize for the shaky video, but um, I thought this was probably a much better way to get uh, the camera in, actually in there where I wanted to show the details. Um, I'm doing this with a brush, uh, I really didn't see a point in loading up the airbrush and everything else for, for such a small piece. And I'm guessing that you know these finer detailed pieces were probably hand painted uh, originally at the factory. And I know the, the ladies at Lesney um, loved doing all the little detail stuff. Uh, in fact, in the history of Lesney, their workers were some of the most loyal of any of the companies that were out there. Uh, by most accounts, it was a great place to work. And so I'm going to kind of in that same spirit, um, use the same method and just hand paint these with a brush. So here you can see we've got our base back together, got our uh, 
original wheels put back on, used uh, Marty's method to mushroom the ends in my drill press. Uh, that replacement driver looks absolutely great in there. Uh, I've gone ahead and painted out a couple of the details, the, the bumpers, door handles, and drilled and tapped the, uh, the main casting. Um, got a really good paint match on this particular model. I think it's as close to the original as I can probably hope to get. Um, last step is just to put our little color matched M2 screw back in. Um, I did color match this one. I like to do that on the older models and when I'm trying to do a real true original casting I think it's a nice touch. On my customs and my later renos I don't care if it's a silver screw. Uh, but on these ones, I think it gives it that real true-to-life look. And so, uh, nice little touch there on reassembling the base. Um, you can see we painted out the grill, the headlights. I went ahead and hit the little horn. Uh, added a couple little details to the ringer box there that hangs on the door, the door handle. The rear bumper turned out really nice. Uh, used my tester's aluminum paint on those and really happy with that. So here's a quick little reminder of where this casting started out. Um, this is a very desirable model and they seem to go uh, quite expensive on most of the sites that I, I see, most of the auctions that come up. And I paid, I think, less than $5 for this casting, obviously because of the condition that it's in. Um, we're missing the uh, driver's side A-pillar on the front. The top piece was bent over and, of course, We've got at least two layers of overpaint on there. And this is what it looks like today. So here is our fully restored Lesney Matchbox number 17C Austin Taxi. This was really a, a challenge as far as uh, the restorations that I've done. Um, this one really required a, quite a few uh, things that I have not had to do before, or I've done one of them, but to have all of these issues on one model um, really made this one fun and and really difficult. Um, I couldn't be happier with the end result. I think uh, we absolutely nailed the original color in that dark maroon. Um, so happy with how all the little painted details came out on this, the door handles and the bumpers and that grill and headlights. Um, really, really happy and uh, hope you enjoyed it. If you did, give us a like down below. As always, uh, subscribe to the channel if you want to keep up with this and all of our future videos. And join us next week for another Vintage Diecast Restoration.